Hello and welcome to this review of my DAS keyboard. Specifically, this is the original model, the Mark 1, so to speak. I've been looking for one of these for a bit because boy, there's a lot more to say about this than you would expect. I've reviewed keyboards from many major modern manufacturers already, such as Corsair, Razer, Logitech, Cooler Master, etc., but never a DAS before, so this is a cool opportunity. Most people will think DAS is a German company, but it's actually a brand from an American company called Metadot, who also do IT services. In German, DAS keyboard actually means the piano keyboard. For a computer keyboard, it would have been DIE TASTATUR! Although, of course, that doesn't sound as recognizable. Calling it DAS keyboard is a type of foreign branding, presumably meant to invoke a feeling of German thoroughness, as the Germans are often associated with high standards of manufacturing, even though this keyboard was made by an American company in China. They are not the only keyboard company to use this type of German branding. The most well-known one is probably Cherry, which are also an American company, not a German one, although they do own offices and are nowadays even headquartered in Germany. It was founded by Walter Cherry in 1953, who made electronic switches in the basement of a restaurant in Highland Park, Illinois. Admittedly, Cherry had already expanded to Germany by the time they started making keyboards, but just like with DAS, I'm not sure why they felt like they needed to push the German edge so much. I mean, America gave us IBM and Microswitch, who made keyboards that are still unsurpassed in quality, decades after they stopped manufacturing. I mean, sure, the Germans make a lot of great stuff, but their achievements in keyboards are something that Americans can definitely be really proud of. Anyway, back to DAS, they have a reputation in the community for making really high quality stuff. And unlike most other big manufacturers, they market their stuff not just towards gamers, but towards typists as well. So much so that most of their marketing speak is directed towards typists, with the added RGB bells and NKRO whistles of a gaming keyboard stuck on top, so as not to scare off the gaming crowd. A keyboard for all, then. Most people will know them for their Mark III and Mark IV keyboards, which come with Cherry MX Blue or MX Brown, and which have a, well, <laughs> let's be kind, <laughs> unique shape. Actually, fuck that. It's hideous. But this first generation model looks much better, absolutely gorgeous in my opinion. Definitely a handsome beast. But it looks kind of familiar, don't you think? Mm, yeah, a model name is close, but that's not what I was thinking of. Hmm, what could it be? Ah, yes, that's it. In other words, the original DAS keyboard is a rebranded Keytronic EO3600 series rubber dome keyboard. Ah, uh ha. -huh. Keytronic, who often modestly marketed their product as the best keyboard in the world, was at least the biggest keyboard manufacturer in the world back in the day, and have been for decades, and they were one of the principal pushers of rubber dome keyboards, then marketed mainly for being silent, rather than cheap, although I'm sure the real reason Keytronic went with them so much is because of the much greater margins. As such, I once nicknamed them the kings of keyboard rubber, although they did make foam and foil and even magnetic reed switches before that, both of which I've shown in previous reviews. The EO3600 series was a very widespread series of rubber dome keyboards. I found them regularly at the recycling center, although ironically I don't have any left anymore. I dumped them all after the great rubber purge of 2016. It was very mediocre anyway. At the time I had no idea why a lot of people were so enthusiastic about KT keyboards. That's it. This is no ordinary EO3600, it's actually a rebranded Ergo Force, which is an evolution of the EO3600 from the late 90s with variable weightings for the rubber domes. The idea was also picked up by Topra a few years later, which resulted in the Real Force series of keyboards, which are still being manufactured today. The Ergo Force is often said to be the best rubber dome keyboard that Keytronic made, perhaps the best any keyboard they ever made, so presumably we're dealing with something special here. Let's take a deeper look. 
First of all, the weighting is a bit different from the Topra real force. It's much more variable, actually. While both Topra and Keytronic used a range of 35 to 45 grams for the alphanumeric keys, all the other keys on the real force are also 45 grams, with the exception of the escape key, which is 55 grams. The Ergo Force, however, had 55 gram domes for the shift, tab, caps, lock, and F keys, as well as the nav cluster, a 65 gram dome for the enter key, and as much as 80 grams for the modifiers, win keys, space bar, and num lock key. It's rather exotic, and to be honest, I'm not sure that a variability this big, nor weightings this stiff, were needed on some of the keys, too. The shift key in particular feels too stiff somehow. It's only 55 grams, so it's far from the stiffest dome on the board, but the miscapitalization on keys from time to time on this keyboard, more so than a miss key presses on other keys. That said, the key feel is pretty solid. I'm starting to see what people like so much about these now. Compared to a real force, it's significantly more tactile across the entire board. With the real force, it's well known that the lighter the keys are, the less tactile they become, with the lightest ones being virtually linear. But the differences in tactility are smaller on the ergo force, and even the lightest ergo force domes are more tactile than the stiffest, most tactile Topra ones. Both in magnitude and sharpness, the tactile bump is greater everywhere on the DAS than on the real force. It's not quite as tactile as a BTC dome with slider keyboard, which have exceptional tactility, especially for a rubber dome keyboard. In fact, I'd say that in many ways the DAS is between the two in key feel. It's also kind of between the two in terms of sound. It's definitely louder and more rattly than a real force, but it's not as loud as a BTC, which is one of the loudest rubber domes I know. I'll demonstrate it real quick for you. The closest match in terms of key feel that I found is this Dell L100 series keyboard. It's a SK8115 to be exact. The feel is almost exactly the same, with the exception of the Dell being extremely mushy and the Keytronic much less so. Not completely mush free, but definitely a lot firmer than most rubber dome keyboards. Anyway, I like the switches. They're worth checking out if you like the rounded tactility of rubber dome type switches. I don't think I like them better than BTC or Scorpius dome with slider, nor Topra, but I'd go as far as to say that of all non-dome with slider, pure rubber dome keyboards, this is probably the best I've felt to date, better even than the Olivetti ANK. Apart from having a custom black paint job, the original Ergo Force was beige, the keyboard also comes with custom blank keycaps. These are made out of ABS and could come in an ANSI style layout as well as this big ass enter type. I'm not sure they ever did an ISO layout one. Now, I'm well known for my exotic style of typing, but unlike what most people think, I can definitely type without looking at the keyboard. It's just that I don't do the regimented, cramping, facehugger style home row spasticity that everybody else appears to use, which has always seemed so uncomfortable to me. I mean, look at those pinky fingers. My eyes are getting RSI just watching it. So anyway, typing on this, despite the lack of legends, was actually not a problem for me at all. I suppose keyboards that leave the legends off, such as this one, are either intended to teach people how to touch type, or if they already do, I can only imagine it's done for either aesthetics or out of pure snobbery. <laughs> and considering the comments I sometimes get on my videos, I suspect that in many cases it's the latter. <laughs> But, that said, I've found cases where the lack of lettering is a definitive problem, and that's during gaming, in which your hands are in a different posture and not poised for typing. For example, on games with particularly hideous or needlessly complex control schemes, such as Far Cry 5, which I've been playing on this keyboard during the testing phase, you'll be using a lot of buttons you might not use constantly, and as you can see from the control layout, almost all the buttons on the left are actually in use, and that's with not all the actions assigned even. But if you have to find G or T or X or a specific number key or something in a pinch, the lack of lettering suddenly becomes a big problem, and several times I found myself ending up dead because of this literal lack of a basic feature. 
I had a similar problem with a plank I borrowed a while ago, which also had blank keycaps as well as the complicating factors of a very small size, ortholinear layout and non-standard key assignment. I made a video of me playing some games with Kyle that shows how ridiculously badly that went. Check it out if you're interested. Link in the description below. Yeah, Do it, Tom. Um, I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to deploy a drone, but it's impossible. Three, Why are you deploying the drone? They're all here. There's three guys staring at Kyle. Uh, how do I get out of the Where drone? Are you even? <laughs> Where were you? you? I'm, so so I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> About the build quality of the keyboard, it weighs almost exactly one kilogram, which is rather disappointing for something with nearly the size and the looks of a Model M, which, by the way, weighs around twice as much as this, never mind the fact that DAS is apparently noteworthy for making keyboards that are exceptionally tough. It flexes unbelievably, which makes sense as the case is pretty floppy and I'm sure there isn't a single metal plate in this entire keyboard or even a backing PCB. It doesn't even have screws for cunt's sake, it's just held together by clips. Really, it just feels like a dead fish to be honest. It comes with a straight USB cable, so at least it's easy to use, and it comes with Keytronic's nice rubber shod flip out feet as well. So yeah, the build quality is pretty disappointing, and frankly I'm still not sure what the point is of deliberately leaving off the legends on the keyboard, except for vanity or arrogance, assuming you can touch type, but the key feel is better than I thought, so if you run into one, it might be worth picking up if you like decent rubber dome keyboards. That's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.